Hello. My name is Tom Fitzgerald. And the reason I'm making this video is because I am dying. I first want to say excuse all the edits in this video. And excuse that I have to read from this paper because my memory has been destroyed by this disease and I just don't remember stuff from second to second anymore. My speech becomes slurred and I can't take a drink or a piece of food without worrying about asphyxiation. About two and a half years ago, I started to recognize symptoms with my mobility. Following a lot of tests, you can't even imagine how many tests, my doctor, Patty Barthy, told me that I possibly have a progressive, incurable disease. I was finally diagnosed by a neurologist with multiple system atrophy, MSA, means of dying. I went from a normal walking person to now I'm in a wheelchair in a hospital bed. The following kind of documents my search for an out-of-the-box cure or a slow a way to slow the progression of the disease. I wrote to a guy named Dr. Bob Melmoy of Cannabis Science. I can't. in Colorado and he wrote back and I quote I would be surprised if cannabis was not beneficial in slowing the disease progression even the United States government has a patent on the neuroprotective properties of cannabinoids and then he says, high dose extracts seem to renormalize a variety of biochemical imbalances. This was the first time that I had my suspicions about medical marijuana confirmed to me by a PhD. I realized at that point not only must I concentrate researching the medical community, but I had to advocate within the political arena. I saw all were Representative Cohen had put a bill HP 1653 in the Pennsylvania House but as what's happened in previous years it never gets voted on in committee why you people are letting Pennsylvanians suffer is beyond my capacity to understand. I, I, I started looking around to see what other people were saying about medical marijuana and I came across a, a, a report 
from the Mayo Clinic. They said, quote, organized business continues to condemn the federal government. And I guess that means the state governments too for their stance on medical marijuana and the ongoing legislative and scientific chaos. The report gave me some sense of hope, but not really, because I, the government idiots are, I don't know what it is. Are they, is it pharmaceutical contributions? Is it uh, the fact that it would be free to the patients? I, I have no idea, I can't believe that with all these big shots, these people that are smart, you guys ignore it. Then I came across this published paper from a bunch of guys in Spain. I didn't really understand their science, but they we're attacking the progression of neurodegenerative disease, MS, Parkinson's, MSA, etc., etc., etc. With cannabinoids, which is derived from cannabis. I wrote a letter, a kind of a long shot, to two, two doctors over in Israel. They're at the Wiseman Institute. Dr. Iwa Kazoa and Dr. Dana River Merman, excuse me. They had published a paper on the non-psychoactive properties of cannabis. That cannabis is called CBD. And non-psychoactive means you don't get high. By now in my research, I've progressed to a hospital bed here in the house and a wheelchair. The muscle pain is constant and god damn it it hurts. No one can forecast how long I have to live or what I am going to go through. But I found a video by Paola Dropkeen Veneer. She made it up of her mother's journey through the disease and her eventual demise. The video actually won the fan favorite at the National Neuro Festival, which gives us great hope, us people that have MSA on the awareness. At that point, I was probably a year into the diagnosis and two years of symptomatic ailments. I had a viable team that was reporting to my primary, Dr. Paggi Barthi, numerous neurologists, endocrinologists, Etc. Etc. The only people that really give a damn is patients and doctors.
in my case, I'm not interested in smoked cannabis. I was in correspondence with Dr. Alan Frankel, who said they are working on a formula which is a ratio of four to one. That's four parts CBD, one part THC, and an extract, an oil, a tincture that would be administered orally. I realized at this point that there was verifiable research that an extract could help my disease. I started writing to all the politicians I could write to. I wrote to Kay Hagen of North Carolina, Casey, Toomey. They were working on a thing called a treat act. which allows the FDA to take clinical trials for terminal patients at an accelerated pace. But I saw SB 409 and the bill by Frankel and Paul in the federal government. These guys, the, the feds aren't going to do anything. It's, it's beyond hope. Those assholes are, are, are going against the medical marijuana community. People like me are dying. And we're dying because of a political agenda or a DEA budget or pharmaceutical lobbying groups. Do I need to go on any farther? No, I don't. You know, I sit here with a computer full of published research that you all could get. Personal correspondence that indicates that I have a chance to live or at least live longer, not in the pain that I'm in. And all I get is politicians that have a prejudice because they're dumb. The American Medical Association, the Institute of American, of, excuse me, the Institute of Medicine, the American College of Physicians, and for God's sake, the Mayo Clinic. What is wrong with you people? Here's a, here's a beauty. I get this letter from my congressman, Todd Platts. Now, I can't believe this man is that ignorant. Maybe he got someone else to write the letter for him that was an idiot, or he's an idiot. And I quote Mr. Todd, however, I am concerned that smoked marijuana, in contrast to oral medications that are legal, have been shown to be safe and effective for treating any medical condition in a well-controlled and documented trial. Are these guys idiots? What is the conspiracy here? Tell me, why won't you guys let people that are dying have a chance? Cancer patients. It's been proven. Dr. Judy Bloom out in San Diego. Dr. Ide in Western Michigan in, in conjunction with the Columbian Brain Bank, his research. And we could go on and on and on and on. But no, we have people like Congressman, see, Congressman Platts, 
living in some universe that is, is not even part of the situation. So here I am. A road gate to a wheelchair. I take 26 pills a day. Here I am in Pennsylvania. But yet there are 17 states that have enacted laws to legalize medical marijuana. Even the dumbass Congress voted for the District of Columbia. I'm not the only Pennsylvania that could benefit from medical marijuana. The latest polls show 56% more than one half of the American public favor legalization completely. And 74%, almost three quarters of the population, want to crack down on medical marijuana. I thank you for your time and patience. And again, <clears throat> I apologize for my speech and the fact that I had to refer to a paper for so much of this. Thank you. Please make an effort for those of us terminal with hardly any time left. Goodbye.